connecting the receiver to the application. What we need, of course, is obviously the receiver. We need the application. And also, we need the audio cable that's included with the receiver. Notice the audio cable has a servo type lead on one end, and it has an audio lead on the other end. So what's very important is that you do this in the right sequence. You need to first take the um, audio cable, and you need to plug the servo end into the bind program port. And that needs to be done first. The second thing that you need to do in the sequence is power up the receiver. In this case, it's outside of the uh, model, so we're going to use a separate battery pack. If this were in an electric model, you'd simply plug in the battery and turn on the um, ESC in order to activate the receiver. So we're going to go ahead and plug that in. The next thing that you need to do is go ahead and open up the app. And the app can be on any screen. It doesn't make any difference. Then you're going to need to turn the volume up to full. So notice uh, the volume needs to be at full. Plug the audio jack in. And with the volume at full, you'll notice at the upper right hand corner, there were rotating bars. Those rotating bars mean that you're trying to make a connection. And then you'll get a receiver section uh, connecting to the receiver. And then this screen, receiver out of sync, will appear. What that tells me is that the receiver and the um, application do not have the same information. You have two options here. You can either transfer the settings to the receiver from the application. That's on the left hand side. So if I have settings in my application that I want to push to my receiver, I touch that left hand side. If I want to transfer the settings from the receiver, in other words, if the receiver already has the programming that I want and I want to change that, then I touch the right hand side. In this case, I don't have any uh, programming in either, so it really doesn't matter what you do. I'm going to go ahead and transfer. And during that, this progression, be sure that you leave everything hooked up and, you know, obviously don't change anything. By the way, you can do this whole process um, either with or without the transmitter um, hooked up and connected. Um, you'll notice that a connected um, screen comes up and then you're ready to go. So the connection status icon is at the upper right hand side in the orange bar. You'll notice that it's a, a round circle with arrows. So anytime you're connecting the system um, or anytime you're making programming changes, take a look at that programming um, icon. So let me show you the various things that that represents. So if you're not connected, you'll see a slash that indicates that you're not connected. If you're connecting, you'll see that it rotates during the time that you're connecting. It'll say receiver connected. And if you're actually connected, um, that icon stops spinning and that tells you that you're connected. So if you're ever in question um, what's going on, take a look at that status. Okay, so there's one more important function with that, that that status represents. When you go to um, several screens um, that actually have the, the information needs to be written to flash. For example, I have the gain screen here. When I uh, go in, I'm going to select flight mode 2. I'm going to make a gain adjustment and you'll see that it rotates and there's an exclamation mark that, po that pops up in the middle. That means that this information that you changed in the screen needs to be written to flash. Now, in order to write it to flash, you actually have to exit the screen. While this um, value will actually be functional when you're operating the model, so I just made the gain change here, and you'll be able to see it uh, real time in the model, in order to actually write it to flash and to store it in the receiver, um, I need to actually exit that screen. And you'll see after I get out of that screen that then the scroll bar rotates and you have the solid bar and you're ready to go. So if you find you're having troubles with connection, there's a high probability that, it was, that the connection process wasn't done in the right sequence. Remember, it's very important that first you start by plugging in the audio cord into the programming data section. Secondly, you need to power up the receiver. Third step is plug the audio jack into the iOS device and then be sure that the volume is up to full. Um, do that a couple times if you have uh, connection problems and I'm sure that that's going to uh, solve your issue. So now we know how to connect the application to the receiver and we're ready to move on to the next process which is setting up the model.